I'm Steve Wilkerson. I'm with Jim Saunders, executive editor of the News Service of Florida. Jim, should the state subsidize sports stadiums? That's a big question and a hot one right now. There's a big meeting this Thursday, and there's a lot at stake for four different sites around the state. Let's discuss. There are four, uh, as you said, there are four uh, uh, stadium projects that are looking for state subsidies. One is Everbank Field in Jacksonville, where the Jaguars play and where they have the annual Florida-Georgia game. Uh, another one is Daytona International Speedway, which everybody knows. Uh, also, there is a, uh, a planned uh, Major League Soccer Stadium in Orlando. And then the fourth one is Sun Life Stadium down in Miami-Dade, which is where the Dolphins play and the Miami Hurricanes play. How um, much money is at stake? In the whole scheme of things, it's really not that much money. Um, they are, uh, the four of them combined are asking for $9 million a year, but it goes over, uh, in some of the cases, 30 years. They want, uh, for instance, uh, uh, the Speedway and, uh, and the Dolphins want $2 million per year for 30 years. So when you add all that up, it gets to be a, a, a large number over, over time. Um, the legislature set aside seven million dollars this year, and they're seeking an aggregate nine million. So, if they're going to fund any of these stadium projects, there's probably somebody not going to get money or get as much as they wanted. What's going on Thursday is the Joint Legislative Budget Commission, which is set up. Set up uh, it includes House and Senate members, and it's set up basically to deal with budget issues mid-year. And they are going to, uh, the, the commission is going to have to decide whether to fund these stadium projects, and if so, how to parcel out the money. Is anybody ranking these sites? Well, here's the situation which has made it even more complex. There's philosophical issues about whether they should be funding these projects, but there's also some issues that have gone on over the last two years that kind of lead up to Thursday. Two years ago, then the House Speaker, Will Weatherford, basically killed a proposal to fund uh, the Sun Life Stadium in Miami-Dade. It was very controversial. Uh, the NFL commissioner came down to the legislature and lobbied on it. I mean, that, that's the kind of issue it was. Um, as a, sort of an outgrowth of that, last year the legislature decided, if we're going to do this, we want to put a process in place where these, these applicants will have to put in uh, sizable proposals, detailed proposals, and then we're going to ask the Department of Economic Opportunity to rank them, and then the Legislative Budget Commission will make a decision. Well, all these four proposals came in, very detailed, hundreds and hundreds of pages of, of data and so on. The Department of Economic Opportunity decided, though, they weren't going to rank them. So <laughs> they just said all these projects qualify, which threw it back in the legislature's lap. Uh, I'm sure they were pleased. Well. House Speaker Steve Crisofoli and Senate President Andy Gardner were not pleased. Um, they, they thought the Department of Economic Opportunity should have ranked these, and that's what they intended. But as a fallback, they sent it to what is uh, known as the uh, econo I'm sorry, EDR is the acronym, but it's the legislature's research arm. And they did a quick and dirty ranking of these projects. So, <laughs> which gets us up to Thursday. You got four projects. Uh, not enough money to go around for what they want, and they're going to have to decide you know, how to deal with this. Part of the whole reason for doing this process last year was to try to cut down on the amount of lobbying that's gone on for these projects over the years. I mean, you know, if you can get a, the way it's gone in the past is that lobbyists have sought money, tried to get you know, bills passed, but there really hasn't been any great review. Um, the ranking that came out from the uh, EDR said that the Orlando Major League Soccer Stadium was number one, the Jacksonville Football Stadium was number two, uh, Sun Life Stadium in Miami-Dade was number three, and the Daytona Speedway was number four. So uh, let the lobbying begin because, <laughs> you know, I mean, Speedway has lobbyists, the Sun Life has lobbyists, so... Uh, that's where we are going into, into Thursday, and we will see how it goes. Seriously, there are people who think that the state should not be funding any of these projects. I mean, uh, being an NFL owner is one of the most exclusive clubs 
in the country. I mean, there's 32 teams and they're all worth a billion dollars or more, you know. And there's a lot of, you know, opponents of the funding of these stadiums say, why, why in the world should the state be, be giving these guys subsidies to, you know, put in new scoreboards or to do improvements? The other issue is, one of the other issues is, that some of these projects are going forward whether the state, money, state funds them or not. I mean, Daytona International Speedway has already started. It's, it has a major renovation going on. And it's already started this. So, you know, it doesn't have the state money in hand, but it started the work. So from a philosophical standpoint, there are people who just don't want to fund these. On the other hand, there are people who say, you know, these, are, uh, these can draw in tourists. They're economic drivers for the communities. And uh, the state can put up a little bit of money to help, you know, improve these, these facilities. We'll see where this goes, and we'll talk about it again, I'm certain, because it's going to shape up to be a hot issue in the session.